Prepens module integration makes industrial design easy. Let's look at a portal frame example. In the frame module, we choose the portal frame's input wizard. Here we can define a portal geometry by specifying some parameters. The wizard will then set up a finite element model once we click OK. We can choose sections for various members from the Procon section database. Let's link to the wind model to calculate wind pressures. At a 90 degree wind angle, we change the internal pressure coefficient for an impermeable wall. Resulting wind pressures are displayed on the wind profile and pressure steps. On closing the window, the wind pressure values is copied back to frame. Let's click OK to generate our model. In frame, we can change various display settings like colors, 3D versus wireframe, and view angle. By clicking on the input tabs, we can view the raw data of our model. Take note of a various section on the beam sections tab. On the beam loads tab, we can take a peek at the wind load cases generated from the wind pressures. Next, we can set up the analysis engine settings and analyze. Let's look at some results. The first tab shows us maximum deflections and the deflected structure. Reactions and beam forces are also shown graphically. We can view individual member force diagrams with the beam envelopes tab. Choose load cases and the beam definition. The output tab shows us the raw data from the analysis engine. Let's optimize our rafter section by linking to the member design for combined stresses module. First, we need to tell the program what type of section we want to optimize. Next, we indicate the element group we want to test. After checking design parameters and L over R ratios, we add the groups as a task. In the Members tab, we can isolate nodes to get the desired effective length in a member. To take the out-of-plane fixity effect of the purlins into account, we change the Y effective length factor to 0.2. Now let's look at the design. In each member, the program shows us moment and actual force diagrams, as well as all the checks for the optimized section. The program suggests an IPE 140. Let's go back to the frame. Under Input, we go to the Beam Sections tab. We click on the rafter and then the Sections button to select the IP 140 section. We must also change the haunch. Let's give the haunch a depth of 130 millimeters. Tick haunch it and select the section. With our optimized rafter, we must reanalyze our model. Let's go to the design links again to design some connections. We must make sure the steel connection radio button is toggled before clicking on one of the supports. Frame will enable the possible connections at the selected node. We will click OK for the base plate connection model. Frame fills in the section and reaction data for us, so we can go to design straight away. We can use the call sheets and drawing tabs to document our base plate design. Back in the frame, we click node 120 for the beam column connection design. We must make sure that we select the correct connecting elements for the column rafter connection. In the beam column connection module, we can change the connection type. By switching to the design step, we can optimize connection variables for the most effective design. Again, we can look at the call sheets and drawing tabs to store our connection design information. Lastly, we design the apex connection. Two possible connections can occur here, so we must toggle to the apex connection radio button. Again, we can choose the connection type and optimize our design.
We can save a 3D model of our connection by left-clicking on the picture. Let's choose 3D DXF and name the file Apex. Next, we fire up AutoCAD. Load our 3D DXF file. And view it in 3D. Back in frame, we can make some graphical changes to show our design portal. We can change from perspective to orthogonal view and switch on the Beam Legend box. Wow, that was hard work! My entire design in only 6 minutes!